Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about enols. There's a chance that uh, you may have encountered enols before, as enols are intermediates in the hydro or hydration of alkynes. Uh, but uh, I'm going to talk about these things outside uh, of that context. Mm -hmm. Every carbonyl compound that's out there has an enol, uh, unless there's certain other circumstances. But enols, uh, if you've heard of them before, come from something called ketoenol tautomerization or tautomerism. The, the notion here is that these two things are tautomers, which are constitutional isomers in equilibrium. We'll talk about how that equilibrium works in a moment. Uh, generally, the two tautomers are called the keto tautomer and the enol tautomer, even though some of the things over here aren't actually ketones, they're autohydes and other carbonyl compounds. Uh, but we generally call this one the keto tautomer and the other one the enol tautomer. This can either work in acid or in base, and I'm going to talk about both versions uh, briefly. In acid, what happens is that the ketone is protonated, or the carbonyl group is protonated. So the carbonyl group is protonated. I'll, I'll draw some arrows. That's that's helpful. <clears throat> and so now we have this protonated carbonyl group, and then this protonated carbonyl group has another resonance contributor. It looks a little bit more like a, a carbocation. And if we're talking about a situation in water, uh, but some other, some other, you know, something else needs to be able to accept our proton. In a minute, we're out that this is a carbocation. Something uh, needs to be able to come and grab this proton and reform a new double bond. And so this is an equilibrium step. And here is our enol. And so now I have my keto form on the left, my enol form on the right. And in between, I have their shared conjugate acid. The enol reverts to the ketone through, through a total reverse of this process. First, protonation, which leads to this intermediate as its resonance contributor as the other protonated carbonyl compound. I mean, I need to, I need to go through and, and clean up some arrows here, okay. and then. <clears throat> Equilibrium arrow, not resonance arrow. We can have water. This way it's a little cleaner. Take that extra proton and shared conjugate acid. Extra proton, there we go. And we're back to the keto form. Shared conjugate acid. Uh, this is also possible in base. So in base, the, the steps are the same, pro, you know, two proton transfers, but the sequence is reversed. So in base, because bases are proton acceptors, oops, 
we have base. The base deprotonates this position alpha to the carbonyl group. We get this anion, which has another resonance contributor. You might be able to, to get a sense of where we're going. Okay. This other resonance contributor looks like this. And then we have water acting as our proton source. And here is the enol. And like the acid case, the keto form and the enol form have a shared conjugate base. And the enol reverts back to the ketone by uh, simply a reverse of these steps. Oxide, mechanism arrows, here we go. We generate our common uh, shared carboc our shared conjugate base. That conjugate base has another resonance structure. So copy and paste. And then it picks up a proton from water and reforms the ketone. Proton from water, equilibrium arrows, copy and paste the keto form. And there you have it. So in general, really, Almost all aldehydes and ketones and some esters and other, other carbonyl compounds are in equilibrium with their enol form, though in most cases, well, let's, let's stop there. In, though, though just being in equilibrium doesn't mean there are equal amounts of these things. So like for acetone and most other ketones, we're looking around you know, greater than 99% of the equilibrium mixture is in the keto form and less than 1% is in the enol form. And, and that less than 1% might even be a tenth of a percent or a hundredth of a percent, depending on the structure of the ketone. Now, There are cases out there where, where you have a complete uh, difference. Um, so for example, here is a keto tautomer and an enol tautomer. And you might recognize that the structure on the right is phenol, an aromatic compound. And in this case, the percentages are reversed. Very little of this reaction mixture, or very little of this equilibrium mixture is uh, present in the uh, in the enol or in the, the keto form. It's almost all in the enol form because the enol form is aromatic. I just want to do one additional case because it's you know it's worth noting um, that. There's some other compounds out there. So here is a molecule that has two ketones neighboring to each other. And depending on the conditions, there's actually a much more even equilibrium here between the keto and the enol form. Oops. Uh, part of that is because 
the enol form has additional stabilization in the form of hydrogen bonding between the two groups. Uh, and so this, this is like around 30%, and uh, this one is around 70%. And it varies by temperature, and it varies by solvent, and... Um, So, so there's uh, some some issue. There's some uh, some interesting things there, and then so there, there's you know there's some interesting things here, and it's actually a pretty classic experiment in physical and instrumental analysis to measure this equilibrium constant by a variety of means, including NMR spectroscopy. It's another uh, type of situation in where there's a significant amount of enol present, and I'm just going to share it because uh, it's sort of biologically important. So this is pyruvic acid, which is a really biologically important molecule, and uh, it, it has two carbonyl groups, and it's the, the ketone part of it that can be present in the enol form, and... In under biological conditions, well, under biological conditions, the carboxylic acid is mostly deprotonated. But it's turned out that a lot of the chemistry of the pyruvate anion is actually centered around its enol form. And so there's a pretty decent, but I can't give you a I can't actually put a number on, but there's a pretty decent high amount of enol form for pyruvic acid. And it's because there's an electron withdrawing group attached to the ketones. When you have an electron withdrawing group, instead of having two partial positive charges neighboring to each other, it's favorable to be in the uh, enol form. In the next video, we'll talk about enolates, where enolates are the shared conjugate base for ketones in keto form and enol form. Uh, and under strong basic conditions, you tend to build up a lot of the enolate anion. Thank you for watching.